Hello, this is the Week 14 Adaptation Efforts, Choices, and Conception, Unit 6, Disaster and Climate Change Scope and Mental Models Mini Lecture for Psi 333, Psychology of Disaster and Climate Change at the University of Maine at Augusta. This is our final lecture for the semester. Uh, it has been truly great working with you all this fall. Uh, we've had a lot of really great conversations. You have written a lot of fascinating reflections and essays. It, it has been an honor to work with you. This week, we are closing up the semester by bringing our conversation full circle. All of our discussions this semester have centered on the psychology of disasters and climate change, reconceptualizing these issues as not just physical science issues, not just emergency management issues, not just urban planning issues, but human issues, psychological issues. But within all of our discussions about how this is a relatively new field, we missed one piece, which is that this isn't actually new, uh, if you know where to look. The first article by Melissa Finocane is Why Science Alone Won't Solve the Climate Crisis. This is one of my favorite human dimensions of climate change articles ever, because it cuts right to the heart of why this is a people issue. We absolutely need sound science. It is essential. But on its own, it is insufficient. We could have the best science in the world, but if we don't cater it to people who need to use it, it's no better than handing someone a parachute as they're falling out of a plane, only they don't know what a parachute is. It's useful, but only if you know how to use it. People have a lot of different ways that we interact with the world around us, and our scientific fields, especially the climate change fields, are evolving to recognize this. More and more, we're seeing social scientists working on interdisciplinary teams to help put this science to use. And that's where we are today. Class, welcome to the field. The second article uh, by Nyong et al. is the value of indigenous knowledge in climate change mitigation and adaptation strategies in the African Sahel. Like I said, it's new for our scientific fields to be integrating human knowledge, but humans have always used their knowledge and we have so much of it. We have tens of thousands of years of knowledge that has been applied in communities and that is still being applied in communities. It's a challenge to figure out how to bring our newer scientific methods together with this old knowledge, but it's a challenge worth facing. I had the honor and the privilege of attending the Pacific Islands Climate Change uh, Climate Services Forum in Fiji in 2013. I sat in and served as a rapporteur or note taker in the livelihoods and culture breakout sessions, which was a series of very intense discussions about exactly this topic. And that's what this third article is about, my report back from these sessions, how to connect with us. We talked about the logistics of that big question. How do we use Western science? How do we apply it in communities that don't think from that viewpoint? How do we make it sustainable so that it's not just dropped as soon as the foreigners move on to other places? And how do we tap into that old knowledge that those communities have been using for centuries, for millennia, that are still using it? How do we integrate that knowledge into our newer Western sciences? After this semester, you may suspect that there's no easy answer to these questions, and you would be right. Or I should say the answer is easy. Trust in open, ongoing, two-way conversation and communication in which we partner with each other, truly partner with each other, learn from each other, and co-create a process that is sustainable and ongoing and that uses all of the information, all of the knowledge, and all of the expertise that we have. That answer is easy, but the process is not. It's hard, it's not quick, it takes a very long time, and it can't be done part way. But again, the climate change crisis didn't spring from nowhere. It evolved over centuries of global action. We won't solve the climate crisis easily. We must work purposefully and collaboratively, globally, for the coming centuries. Every step we take gets us closer, even if we don't get to see the results of those steps in our lifetimes. But think back to that first coal-fired engine. They never got to see the sea levels rise. This is not going to be a quick process. 
So for our class activities this week, you should be completing your web resource or the workshop participation this week. Uh, our workshops are going to be in Bangor and Augusta on December 2nd and 3rd. Uh, similarly, the survey is live, so please share it on social media or with at least five people. They don't have to complete it. Participation is always optional. Just your word that you shared it is enough for me. Uh, your final paper will be due on December 13th. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these activities or about anything that we have worked on or discussed throughout the semester. Again, it's been a really great honor to be working with you throughout this, throughout this semester.